Developing in Webflow can be a lot slower if you don't know the exact shortcuts you need to use. So that's why in this video, we're going to be going over 10 shortcuts you can use in your day-to-day -day Webflow development to make that process a lot faster. The first thing is probably a little bit obvious, uh, and that is basically switching tabs in your Chrome browser. But uh, I mean, usually we like having a laptop on the right and a monitor in front of us to make sure that we're kind of as productive as possible. So we can take a look at the website we're migrating on the right or the Figma file on the right. And in the center, we can basically just uh, see our Webflow uh, designer and design and de I mean, basically develop in the Webflow designer. But if that is not the case, uh, using command one, two, three, hopefully just three tabs are going to be open on, uh, open on your screen. You can switch from your Webflow to your maybe live website to the design itself. Do the inspecting, press command one, develop in Webflow, press command two, inspect and see how it should look like and just basically switch all of the tabs uh, while you're working. This might seem a little bit straightforward, but uh, I mean, sometimes we've seen that people are not using that, like specifically at our agency, we currently have almost 30 people. I mean, 30 team members, I wouldn't say people, 30 team members that are using um, Webflow on a day-to-day -day basis. And this can sometimes be overlooked uh, kind of on a, like a, a pretty straightforward shortcut. Then the next one, everybody knows this one, uh, and that is Command E. So by pressing Command E, you can open up uh, the panel and basically search for a div. You can search for a navigation. You can search for a footer. You can search through components. You can search through libraries. You can search through elements like adding an navbar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So here we're going to be actually adding a div. Command E, adding a div. Command E, adding a div. And then basically by opening up the left panel, we can figure out command C, command V that we added divs. So like, I mean, that we added that we added a lot of divs in a pretty short period of time. The other way around would be that you add, open up the panel, that you find a div block, that you drag a div block, that you figure out where you need to drag a div block. So that's going to take a lot of time. So it's not the best possible process. So that's why I highly encourage everyone to use command E on a day to day basis. And then uh, the next thing straightly correlating into the command E is command enter. So let's open up the navigation panel. Uh, let's go ahead and delete these blocks. Just showcasing how fast can you add things on the navigation panel. So let's add command E, div, command E, heading, command E, paragraph. Pressing the div block, command enter, we're going to use now to add classes. So I ask add a class like maybe section for this. And then we can uh, use our uh, arrow panels. So by using arrow to the bottom, we can basically navigate through elements. And when you're inside of an element, you can uh, use arrow left, arrow right to navigate and find the items. So let's go ahead again, go ahead and press enter, heading, whatever, jumbo maybe, jumbo heading, uh, use the arrow keys, then uh, text big, and we're all good to go. I mean, uh, this way, you're basically never going to be using the panel here. Every, I mean, the add elements panel that is on the A shortcut and everything you're ever adding is going to be added with a keyword and you're probably never going to use a mouse. So like maybe if you hate the Mac trackpad, if you're developing on a Mac, in the end, you're not never going to use it when you develop this way because all of the shortcuts are going to be, uh, are going to allow you to add elements without touching the keyboard. Another one uh, is Command Shift O. Uh, sometimes when you don't upload an image properly, maybe the image is corrupt, or for a million of different reasons, uh, you don't want to use responsive images, and that is Webflow actually scaling your images to other responsive variants. So by pressing pressing Command Shift and O, we can basically open and close the responsive image panel on the right. Hopefully, that's gonna resolve a lot of QA problems, like when you have. Um, those um, blurry images, you're wondering why they're blurry. They're good in the designer, but when you go to the preview mode, they're not good. So just by using command shift L, it's going to be a, a great thing. The next one is going to be really useful when you actually uh, create interactions and you want to preview how they work uh, pretty quickly. So by pressing command shift P, you can go directly into your preview mode and see how your interaction works. 
So, I mean, this is a design from our friends at Desktop of Stock. Uh, you can visit their uh, uh, library of images that are anything but stock images. So that's why we're using that as an example. But you can go ahead and see here how easy it is to just press Command Shift P and switch from preview to uh, designer, from designer to preview and back and forth. And then uh, the next one we're going to be going over is Shift P. Uh, it's probably pretty straightforward, but I mean, like if you want to remove your mouse from a uh, completely in Webflow, just pressing Shift P uh, can open up your publish uh, navigation panel so you can publish to custom domain or to your Webflow.io domain. Then uh, another thing that is pretty useful is Command Shift R. If you're using any sort of external scripts, on our side, we usually upload the code to AVS and then render the code on Webflow. So we don't have to go from the designer, pub, change the code, publish the code, wait for the code to be published and go uh, to the website itself. But instead we just add a script to the website. We write our code in VS code, upload it to the AVS. And by pressing command shift R, we're gonna be clearing the cache for this specific page and we're gonna be able to see all of the latest changes live and figure out how, to, how our JS code actually works on production. And the final thing, and like I think it's the 10th thing that we need to go over is just one, two, three, four, five. I mean, no, not five actually, I mean, depending on how many, uh, one of the, how many breakpoints you have. So by pressing one, two, three, four, you can go ahead and navigate through your website and figure out how your website actually looks on every single one of the breakpoints and see, did you make any mistakes on the responsive variants or anything similar in that case? So I, I know that there are a lot more shortcuts that are available in Webflow and by going on the bottom left panel and going to keyboard shortcuts, you're gonna be seeing all of the possible uh, shortcuts that there are in Webflow. So I would love to hear, are you using any of the other shortcuts? These are the ones that we use on a day-to-day -day basis and we've gotten responses from, from our team members uh, that they use uh, basically on a day-to-day -day basis. So write your favorite uh, keyboard shortcuts below and until the next video, bye-bye.